Hello and a very warm welcome back to Hughes Nursery and in today's video it's all about soil health or rescuing soil like a dead soil like this which isn't very healthy and I don't think you're going to grow much amazing veg and I always feel that the health of the soil has a direct positive impact on the health of the plant so in this video I'm going to show you how you go from a dead soil and how to very quickly within a few minutes regenerate it so you turn it into something like this which is all ready to start growing food in. Now this is a short-term fix but it also plays an integral role for the long-term health of the soil too. So the problem of having a really poor soil like this is that it really lacks organic matter so it can't hold on to moisture very well at all. In fact if I use a watering can you can see that the water rather than seeping into the soil, runs away. And that is a big problem because it's fool's watering. If you're watering the whole thing, the surface might seem like it's wet. But if I just do this, you can see instantly, it's actually really dry. So this is where I actually say and advocate that you should dig in order to save the soil. Rather than starting all fresh, I don't see any harm in digging this. So we can dig in organic matter and I'm going to layer more organic matter on the top. So I'm just going to start by just beginning to dig this up. And you can see certain areas there is a bit of moisture at the base, but you should never have a soil which looks like it's almost smoky because of the because of how dry it is and I always like to work in kind of a, a square so it's 1.2 by 1.2 this is a 4 by 4 foot square that we're working in and eventually this is where the tomatoes are going to be so I've got to make sure that the soil is ready for the tomatoes because uh, arguably they're my favorite crop of the year And there is actually nutrients and life in this soil and things like bacteria they, they actually go dormant when it's this dry waiting to come up when needed so what digging does is that it releases it so we can start capturing water a lot better and for the section I might use two or three full watering cans of water to put in this before I do anything else. And now it's just mixing in the water and I just carry on doing this until I can see that the whole thing has got some texture. Like there, you can still see underneath after all that water, still bone dry. And as I'm digging, I always like to make sure that I've got a watering can filling up with water ready to use. So you may be able to see that there is moisture on the side here and, and there's also nutrients because we've got plants growing in the moisture. But again, it's still really lacking the organic matter inside of it it's not that really dark color that i want to see so this whole area is going to be improved so already you can see it's beginning to look a little bit better and i've got another watering can to put on now and as well you can see that because there is a bit of moisture in the soil, it doesn't quite run off as well. You can see it actually going inside and that's a really good sign. You can see it, it's being sucked and drawn into the soil. Now, when it is bone dry, it wasn't actually doing that, which means a lot of the watering that you do isn't going to be effective at all and the most important thing is to really increase the organic matter in your soil because it's also going to make your soil a lot more resilient against droughts so knowing what happened last summer that's going to be a huge benefit especially under cover and the size of the bed is also where they 
dry out the fastest. So don't ignore that part. Now, if you've got plenty of other jobs to do in the garden, what I like to do is use a sprinkler and I'll just reel the hose back and you can kind of set this once it's at a specific moisture where you can see that it is beginning to soak the ground in. We've got some roots because we've got a cotoneaster growing on the other side. I'll just set this to start working slowly and kind of angle it. And I just use a really concentrated area and I'll leave this for five or 10 minutes and come back and that's gonna actually put a lot of moisture into the ground. And already you can see there's a lot better moisture level content inside this. And also as you dig it, you're helping to disperse that moisture around. And that is basically ready now. It'll just need a little bit more, maybe another watering can full, and it'll be ready to go. And now after using the sprinkler system, I've given it a bit of a dig over. It's looking really good, but I'm gonna put one more watering can full over the top. And now, if you compare the difference of the water soaking in, now compared to earlier on in this video, which I'm showing you now over the B-roll, you can see that it soaks in a lot more effectively. But obviously I haven't yet put in any organic matter. So what I'm gonna do first is I've got a wheelbarrow full of manure and I'm gonna actually bring this in and dig it in so the nutrients can get down deeper as well. So we don't have to wait for the long process of the earthworms bringing it down. And then I will cover that with some multi-purpose peat-free compost. So there's a nice amount of manure, which I'm now gonna spread out a bit, just using the fork, spread it out nicely. And now I'm gonna start just digging it in to mix it up nicely. And this is gonna do absolute wonders and I can't wait to taste the tomatoes in summertime. So I've actually been bothered to get the rake for this stage. I'm just gonna rake it out nicely and we have incorporated a lot of manure into this, a whole wheelbarrow load, remember? And you can see that the, the level has raised quite nicely as well. And then just before I put on the final layer, I'm gonna tap it down like this to really even out that level. So I've got the multi-purpose peat-free compost here and the idea is I'm going to add a kind of an inch, maybe two inch layer, so three to five centimetres of compost over the top and give it a final watering in and it will be all ready to either sow salads direct or when it comes to growing tomatoes. And you may find it a bit funny that I'm using a kid's rake, but this is actually really useful for a smaller scale like this to really concentrate, especially along the sides to make sure that I give it all a nice equal level of compost. And now I've finished with this rake. I'm just gonna do exact same as the other time use a bigger one to just tap it all down nicely. And now we have a completely regenerated part of the raised bed and you can do this inside or outside. And the, I feel the ideal time to do it would actually be more around autumn time, but because we didn't actually water these beds during the winter, they got really dry. And all the things that we grew last year, we didn't actually quite put enough organic matter in the soil. So I'm hoping that this will be enough now when we, as long as we keep on topping it up with an inch or two of compost a year at least, this will now keep us going and we won't be in the same position as we were about half an hour ago with the dry soil behind me. So you can just see the complete transformation. And I always like to finish just by giving it a quick watering in 
just to add that moisture. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and that it helps with you trying to regenerate your dead soils. It's actually really easy. The only thing, the only possible challenge is trying to get all that organic matter. But the idea is, is to go big at the start, go big with a lot of organic matter, and then you only need a bit to maintain it from there on.